Hi, Assalamu Alaikum and good morning everyone. Thank you for visiting my channel again. Abdul Rahim here with you. So we are continuing our mitral regurgitation topic and we were discussing about the parameters of uh, to assess the severity of mitral regurgitation. In the last vlog, I described you about two parameters. One is the um, vena contractor and the other one was the PISA method, like how to calculate the ERO, effective regurgitant orifice. Today we are going towards the next parameter, which is regurgitant volume. So what is regurgitant volume? It means you are trying to measure the whole volume, what's happening uh, when the regurgitation is there. Okay, for example, uh, in mitral regurgitation, you want to measure the volume which is coming from the left ventricle to the left atrium during systole. So you need to measure this. So there are two parameters. There are two ways to calculate the regurgitant volume. One is the PISA method, like from ERO, and the other is the volumetric method. I'll explain you both the methods now, okay, and then I'll take you on to the presentation and then I will show you practically how you are going to do it. And then I will also explain you like what sort of mistakes we do, like where we need to be careful, all the tips and tricks I will explain you, okay. So first about the PISA method, how you are going to get the volume, regurgitant volume. So it's very easy. Once you get the ERO, just multiply it with the VTI of regurgitant depth, okay? So for example, you get the mitral ERO, multiply it with MR VTI. MR means mitral regurgitation VTI. There is only one hint that some people get confused that are you going to get the mitral regurgitation VTI or the mitral inflow VTI? You don't need mitral inflow VTI here. You just need mitral regurgitation VTI, okay? And it will give you. Most of the machines, what happens is that they have a PISA calculation, okay? If you go into the PISA calculation, you will see uh, PISA radius. You measure the radius of the PISA, okay? I showed you in the last vlog. So you measure the uh, P, uh, PISA radius. Then you, the machine asks you to measure the VTI of the uh, regurgitant jet. So mm -hmm. why machine asks you to, uh, for the VTI? Because once you do the VTI, once you reach at the peak, the machine automatically detects the peak velocity. For the ERO, machine don't need the VTI. Machine actually needs the peak velocity. Okay, why they ask you to do the VTI? Because the machine automatically calculates the regurgitant volume as well for you. So um, once you do the VTI, the machine detects the peak velocity and it calculates the ERO for you and then it multiplies with the VTI of the regurgitant jet. So once you're doing the PISA method, uh, the machine asks you uh, mainly three things one is the um, elizing velocity again some of the machine picks automatically about the elizing velocity some uh, uh, automatically picks the elizing velocity some machine doesn't pick the elizing velocity and they ask you to enter the elizing velocity and some of them they just give a hint that you want to get the upper elizing velocity or lower one so you just click it that one so this is one thing about elizing velocity the second thing is to uh, you know do the uh, VTI of the regurgitant jet so you do the VTI of the regurgitant jet what what you do it with the CW and the third thing is to do the radius measurement so these three measurements you need to do it to get the PISA radius uh, to, to get the PISA readings so once you finish all three measurements it will give you the ERO and also the regurgitant volume how it calculates its regurgitant volume? It calculates the ERO first and then it multiplies with the VTI and gives you the ERO. Okay, that's one thing. So that's the one method to calculate the regurgitant volume. By the way, we are at the moment we are discussing about the mitral regurgitant volume, but if you are doing the aortic one, you will track the aortic VTI, aortic regurgitation VTI. If you are doing tricuspid, you will do the tricuspid regurgitation VTI. So whatever regurgitant volume you are going to calculate, you will use the same, um, same method. The next thing is volumetric method. Now volumetric method is also very easy, but it has some, you know, very important tips in it. So it, how you are going to calculate the volume uh, by the volumetric method, you use the continuity equation in this one. So you say like, uh, the, you calculate first the mitral stroke volume. So how you are going to get the stroke volume of mitral valve? You get the annulus of the mitral valve in apical four chamber view when the leaflets are fully open. Measure the annulus of the mitral valve and then get the VTI of mitral valve. Here you are going to get the mitral inflow VTI. Okay, diastolic mitral inflow VTI. Okay, not about regurgitation. 
okay so you need to get the mitral stroke volume so you will get the mitral annulus and mitral inflow velocity the flow which is going from the left vent as from the left atrium to the left ventricle okay so then you measure these two things machine will use the formula you know the stroke volume formula pi r square and these all things and into vti and then you will get the uh, mitral valve stroke volume once you get the mitral valve stroke volume the continuity equation says that the flow goes from the mitral valve should be the same flow going from the aortic valve as well from the lvot so now you calculate the flow across the lvot how you are going to calculate the flow across the lvot the same thing get the diameter of the lvot in uh, personal long axis view and get the vti of the lvot doppler in um, apical five chamber or apical three chamber view so once you will do this it will give you the lvot stroke volume now we have two stroke volumes mitral and lvot for example when we calculated the mitral valve it came like 100 100 ml is going from the uh, mitral valve okay so mitral stroke volume is 100 so you calculate the lvot stroke volume it should be also around 100 okay near like 95 100 maybe 100 to like in the same range but if you measure the lvot stroke volume and you get around 40 or 50 or 60 it means the difference between these two is your regurgitant volume so what's happening actually what's the you know, what's the real thing is that 100 ml has gone from the left atrium to the left ventricle now when left ventricle contracts it sends about 30 to 40 ml like for example 40 ml to lvot rest of the blood which is 60 ml it goes back to the left atrium from the mitral valve so that's your regurgitant volume okay so i think i described it in a simple way hopefully you all understand it now we will go on to the presentation and i'll describe you how you are going to do it and i'll tell you about the tips and important points you need to keep in mind okay so these were the two parameter uh, these were the two methods to assess regurgitant volume thank you let's come on to the presentation now Okay, so here we are as I told you that uh, we can calculate the regurgitant volume by two ways the first way is the by PISA method or by ERO so once you get the ERO you are going to use this formula regurgitant volume is equal to ERO multiplied by mitral, uh, uh, mitral regurgitation VTI so how you are going to calculate it I'll just go quickly through the process so you know how to do it you know you use the, we use this example before so you get the mitral uh, mr radius you get the elizing velocity okay and you use and you see we did the vti of the mitral regurgitation once we did the vti machine automatically calculates the peak velocity as well so machine used this peak velocity for us and give give us this uh, ero we have 0.72 ero now you need to keep in mind that the uh, peak uh, the MR VTI was 161 so if we went into the if we went into the formula and we put 1.722 into 161 and we get the regurgitant volume of 117 so this is the way you are going to do it uh, most of the machines will does this automatically for you so you don't need to do it but you should know the formula and you should know the process so if somewhere there is uh, no option available in the machine or you are doing it manually or in an exam you should know that uh, how you are going to use the formula and how it will calculate the regurgitant volume for you so this is one way of regurgitant volume the other way is that as i told you uh, earlier that you will calculate the stroke volume of the mitral valve and you will calculate the stroke volume of the lvot and you will subtract the lvot stroke volume from mitral stroke volume and you will get the regurgitant volume so how you are going to do it you need to get the uh, LVOT stroke volume by using this formula stroke volume of LVOT is equal uh, is equal to cross sectional area of LVOT into VTI of LVOT cross sectional of area uh, cross sectional area is equal to 2 pi r square so instead of r you will get this diameter here you will measure the LVOT diameter in parasternal long axis view this way and then you will put the Doppler in the same area in apical 3 or apical 5 chamber view and then you will use this equation to get your stroke volume of LVOT then your stroke volume of the mitral valve you will get the mitral annulus 
here you will measure the annulus in uh, mid diastole okay once the valve is properly open so you get the mitral annulus and then you put the cursor you need to be careful that once you are doing the mitral stroke volume you need to put your cursor here okay you see this uh, arrow uh, the mark of arrow you will put your cursor here not like what you are doing it in diastolic function that you put it on the tips of the mitral valve no here you are going to put your um, cursor here in between the mitral annulus okay and then you will track the mitral annulus uh, velocity okay you will get the vti of this one and then you will use the same sort of formula to get the stroke volume of mitral valve once you get the stroke volume of mitral valve you will just subtract the stroke volume of lvot from it and that would be your regurgitant volume in mitral regurgitation patients okay now i'll uh, go further to give you some important points about it so optimization is very important once you are going to measure the lvot diameter and also the mitral uh, uh, annulus diameter you need to be uh, very careful because you are measuring millimeters okay and once they go into the formula you you are going to use the radius scale so every uh, every measurement what you are going to take it's going to be scale so you need to be very careful what you are going to measure so the best thing is to zoom your uh, image and also decrease the gains don't take a lot of gains that you are measuring you are also taking the you know some some uh, some other artifacts as well and also don't make it very black that you are overestimating it so you need to keep the uh, you know adequate gains and uh, this is how you are going to measure it this this is the mitral annulus you are going to measure it in mid diastole and um, lvot diameter you are going to measure it in systole this is important then another thing is that you need to keep in mind that you once you are doing the lvot di, um, lvot doppler you need to put the cursor in lvot okay most of us what we do is we go more up towards the lv and we put the cursor slightly away from lvot then we are going to get the lower vti so always put as closer to your um, uh, valve as you can just you know where you measure your lvot diameter like within 5 to 10 millimeter of your aortic valve towards the lv side okay don't go too far into the lv and don't don't go uh, into the aortic valve as well so you need to be in 5 to 10 millimeter of the uh, aortic valve towards the lv side so these are the important things then they are mentioning that uh, you can uh, you can get another way of uh, getting the stroke volume of uh, like uh, lvot stroke volume instead of getting it by doppler you can get it by you measure the lv volume diastolic volume and systolic volume so you will subtract the systolic volume from diastolic volume and you will get the stroke volume okay this is another way and they are mentioning that 3d is a good thing which i'll i'll describe you later on once we'll be doing the 3d but you can use the simpson method as well so you can calculate the mitral stroke volume by doppler and you can get uh, get the volumetric method by using simpson method by lv diastolic uh, volume biplane and lv diastolic uh, lv systolic volume biplane so once you will subtract uh, subtract the um, uh, lv systolic volume from diastolic volume then you will get the stroke volume of lv so that stroke volume you can uh, 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 you can then subtract it from uh, uh, mitral valve stroke volume and that would be your regurgitant volume but you can go through the doppler as well which is an easy way then what are the advantages it is a quantitative method it's valid in multiple jets and eccentric jets as well so you can use it in different conditions okay it provides also lesion severity and also about the volume like how uh, how big is the volume going from and it is validated against the cmr in isolated mr so this is very important thing that this is uh, this way is also validated against the cardiac mri so this is uh, you know the numbers are very good with cardiac mri as well so you should use this uh, formula to get the uh, regurgitant volume the next thing is pitfalls in this uh, method is that um, you know it's not valid for combined mr and ar because once you are going to get the mr uh, you know uh, mitral uh, stroke volume and once you will be getting the lvot stroke volume you need to, uh, to think that there is ar as well so the AR will be accommodated with uh, stroke volume. So it's going to be tough for you to uh, like, it's going to be 
uh, wrong information so it's always good to use the pulmonic valve instead of aortic valve once there is an aortic regurgitation okay so the next thing is that you need a lot of training and you need to be experienced being a sonographer once you are going to do it because uh, you know uh, these are again I would say that these are very minute measurements if you are taking um, LVOT diameter of 18 or 20 it's gonna make a lot of difference okay it's only two millimeters if we talk about but it's really makes a lot of difference so you need to be careful and then again the pulse wave Doppler once you are going to put the pulse wave Doppler you need to be in LVOT not away from LVOT and not to, uh, towards the LV and not towards the aorta as well so you need to be in that area of LVOT so this was our next uh, thing about um, uh, regurgitant volume now in the next video I'll see you with the other parameters of mitral regurgitation thank you very much bye bye take care